action. Shining a light on autism and life as an autistic person. Welcome to My Friend Autism, a podcast breaking down barriers, stigma and misconceptions around autism while increasing understanding and acceptance of the autistic community. And now, here's your neurodivergent host, Orion Kelly. Welcome back. Oh, just plain welcome. I'm Orion Kelly, that autistic guy. I'm all about helping you raise your level of understanding, acceptance and appreciation of the autistic community. And I'd like to welcome you to another video podcast on my purpose-built, dedicated, all-podcast YouTube channel. What a title. <laughs> we workshop that for a while. Anyway, uh, yes. And if you look, if you're watching this video podcast, I'd be delighted if you consider subscribing to my uh, Orion Kelly Podcasts YouTube channel. If you're listening and not watching, just on your podcast platforms, wherever you get your podcasts, well, welcome to my friend. It's great to hear you, see you, not... Oh, either way, I can't do either. It's just you that can hear me and see me, so this is just strange. It's awkward. In fact, it's an invasion of my privacy. What is your problem? Okay, let's move on. Hey, what are we going to do today? On this very special, it's not special, I'm just saying that, uh, this very special, again, here I go, uh, podcast, is talk about a thing that is very, very interesting. It's In fact, it's fascinating, and I reckon you're going to be pretty interested in this topic. Demand avoidance. Huh? All right. Cool. Let's explore the topic of demand avoidance in autism. What is it? Demand avoidance is essentially... When you find yourself suddenly unable to do something at a particular time because of the demand to do it. Hmm. This is weird, isn't it? It's interesting. Okay, so you're doing something or you want to do something or you plan to do something, but all of a sudden you are rendered unable to do that something at a particular time due to a particular reason. I really do struggle as an autistic person with demand avoidance. It's really important to understand, by the way, the connection between demand avoidance and autism is not really a choice. It's a manifestation of a disability, a condition. And as a result, it should be respected. So we're not belittling it. Right? Rather than belittling something or judging something, we need to respect it. How do we respect it? We understand it. Hence the podcast. All right, so let me give you some examples and advice that you can implement right away. Firstly, just a couple of basic examples, general examples. Again, like I'm not a doctor or a healthcare professional. I'm just an autistic dude sharing you my, you know, my general thoughts. If you want to talk about this with a healthcare professional, I recommend you go and see your family doctor, your GP, that kind of stuff. All right, so some examples. There was something that I actually I'd planned to do. I was going to do it. Before I could do it, someone asked me to do it. Now, I can't do it. The asking, or, this is bigger if you're married, <laughs> that's, all, that's awkward, uh, or the reminding by someone else has rendered me unable to do the task. Does that make sense? Another example. Other people, again, if you're married, got kids, other people relying on me to do something, and that reliance can lead me to not be able to do something. So it's knowing there's something I've got to do because people are relying on me to do it can often render me unable to do it, the reliance. So the demanding to do it, the suggesting or reminding me to do it, and then the reliance. Two examples. All right, the next one. So there's something I want to do. Okay, I really want to do it. Like I, I'll do anything to do it. But there's a time constraint on my ability to do it. So I can't do it. On the outside, it seems like I won't do it. What are you talking about? You can, what do you mean you haven't got enough time to just do it? Do you want to do it or not, mate? Do you want to record a video or not, Orion? What do you mean you haven't got enough time to record a video? How long does it take? What, isn't it quick? Just do it. What, what's your problem? This isn't a tantrum. This is a genuine inability to start a task. Now, the thing about the video thing is too, this is just an example, but this is what craps me, right? You know, so let's say you watch like, I don't know, a 10-minute YouTube video of mine. I'm not even joking when I say 
like it doesn't take me it probably takes me an hour to an hour and a half potentially to record like a 10 to 20 minute video that's not a joke podcasts are a bit different i just kind of roll with them right okay because i guess also because they're kind of they're not scripted word for word but they're more scripted some of my videos to be specific so they can take longer to, to make all right but then there's the setup phase Right? I can't just go into, like, I don't have like a purpose-built studio ready to go. I'm just a dude in a house, right? So I've got to set up the space, you know, with, with the background stuff and the lights and the microphone and the camera and all that kind of stuff. I've got to set all that up before I can hit record. So I've got to set all that up. I've got to obviously make sure I'm set up as a person, right? And then I've got to hit record. Then I've got to record. It, it could take me, look, it depends. It could take me minutes. It could take me an hour some days to set up. Okay, then it takes me an hour and a half to record it, and then I could be editing it for a week. So, so telling me, oh, look, I'm going to go outside with the kids. Do you want to go upstairs and record a video? I'm like, what, what are you talking about? By the time I'm set up, before I even hit record, you'll be back inside, and then it'll be noisy, and I can't record. So what do you mean? No, that's a time constraint I can't work with. I just wanted to explain that, because sometimes people think, what are you talking about? Do bit by bit. Yeah, well, what's the bit by bit? So I'll set up, this, I'll set up and there's no, there's no studio. I'll set up the study to record a video. And then what, I record it the next day? Do you see what I'm saying? It's, anyway. <sighs> Last example I'll give you. So unable does not mean don't feel like it. All right, so it feels like the intervening act is an immovable, impenetrable barrier meaning I mentally and physically cannot do the task. Does that make sense? So there's different things that can cause demand avoidance. We've talked about being asked to do something. I was already going to do. Being reminded to do something. I was already planning to do. Having a reliance, right? People rely on me to do this. Time constraints. Intervening acts. I want to talk about something that's at a more clinical level, just, just so we have an idea of the differences here. So I'm talking about the connection between demand avoidance and autism. Now, there's a clinically diagnosed form. Demand avoidance isn't at a clinically diagnosed level, but we're going to talk about PDA. A couple of ways of saying this. There's pathological demand avoidance, you could say it like that. Some people like to say persistent demand avoidance. By the way, PDA, not public displays of affection. It doesn't make it the right way to say it just because dudes on the text want to make it up. <laughs> PDA, pathological or persistent demand avoidance. Now, it describes a strong characteristic to avoid everyday demands and expectations to an extreme extent. PDA is increasingly viewed as a profile that is seen in some autistic people. So autistic people can definitely have this at a clinical level and more broadly, or I think basically more broadly in general terms, most autistic people have it at a subclinical level, at least demand avoidance, and it impacts their daily life. And they can come across with their family and friends, their partners, yada, 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 their work colleagues, their employer, as not a good kind of dude or person to have around, right? Well, so what? You can't do anything? You're not going to work? Well, because we said it or we reminded you or you need to do it or this happened or there's not enough time. What are we talking about, right? So this is how, this is why it's important to view things through this more specific lens rather than just like judging us for being different. So for me personally, right? I don't reckon I have a diagnosis of PDA. Like I don't think I have it at the level where it could be diagnosed. So a diagnosable form is another way of putting it. But I am autistic. I'm not sure if I meet the criteria for PDA. Probably don't. But I do find things like meltdowns and burnout can contribute to my more transient experiences of demand avoidance. What I'm saying is I don't think I have it like at a clinical level just constantly in extreme, right? But I do believe as an autistic person, being autistic and living life as an autistic person can trigger bouts, scenarios, situations of demand avoidance. All right. So demand avoidance, I absolutely 100% experience 
very often. I talked about the time constraint thing, right? My wife might go, hey, I'll, I'll take the kids to the park. You want to record a video, right? Me thinking, well, thanks so much. And by the way, I'm not, this is not about my wife. Like she's bloody amazing. How nice is that of her to do that, to take the kids somewhere for me? But in my mind, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do that. I can edit. I could work on editing stuff. But anyway, time constraint stuff gets me. All right, so one of the main drivers for me dropping out of uni, out of law school, was demand avoidance. Being forced to contribute in tutorials, it's not like I wasn't able to contribute, but it's, there's such a, a mandatory demand. You must attend tutorials. You must contribute. You will be assessed on your contributions. I will, you won't get a choice. Someone will ask you and you have to answer. It's not like I don't know the answer even. But this is, it just it completely throws up this kind of demand avoidance from that, which just blocks me. You know, answering questions in lectures too. You know, the lecturers will might ask people questions. You might know the answer, but again, this demand avoidance from pointing out you or, or singling out you or out asking you or adhering to word count. Or due dates. Assessments have a set, you know, obviously assessments have due dates. They have word counts. I think uh, some things you study in uni, word counts are a little bit more lenient, fluid. Not law. See, if you, let's say the court, you know, or a judge or the court gave you a particular word count on, on something you had to submit and you went over it, there's big trouble, big trouble. So they teach you very early in law school. If, if we tell you the word count, you stick into the word count champ. Right, like this is important. So that, that's that's hammered into you. These kind of things can cause me to shut down. So due dates on assessments, specifics, word counts, all these things, they can cause me to shut down. I would also say it's probably one of the reasons why I avoid appointments, because appointments that include any travel, any travel, specific times. It it, it it's. I guess, what can I tell you? It triggers me and therefore forces me to try to avoid getting in that scenario. What's funny is I have no trouble traveling to destinations all over the world with my family on holidays. But I guess they're not like appointments. I mean, they are. You book them, but it's still on your own time. Like when you go on a holiday, you know, you do what you want to do when you want to do it technically with your family, except not my family. (laughs) But, you know, with appointments, you must be at this doctor's at 12 o'clock and you must go and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, so that, yeah, that's, they're a couple of the experiences that I, I absolutely have struggled with. You know, demand avoidance in uni, that's a, I guess it's kind of same to work. You know, what do you say to that? People go, what are you talking about, Orion? Give me a break. Everyone has the same rules. Everyone has the same demands. Just do, just do it. Just deal with it. Just move on. Well, I'm just telling you, this idea of demand avoidance and autism and these particular triggers, these are the triggers that you will find in the workplace, that you will find at uni studying, and therefore, because they are there, they're apparent, you are going to experience these triggered moments of demand avoidance. And it's going to really lead to you struggling in the workplace or in uni or in school or whatever. Not because you're not capable, but because you have been triggered. And this is a big issue. The tutorials, the demands, the assessments, all the little rules and things. These are things that, sure, they're there for a reason. But as an autistic person, I'm just saying, hey, as an autistic person, this might trigger you and you might experience demand avoidance. And that's going to be bad for work or school or friends or family. Okay, so let's be aware of that. You probably weren't aware of it. You're aware of it now. Okay, so now you know you're not lazy. You're not worthless. You're not useless. You're not a bad person. You're autistic, experiencing situations of demand avoidance. For all I know, you may have a diagnosable form of PDA. I don't know. All right, more experiences. I think demand avoidance is one of the reasons why I find it absolutely impossible to do any work for days on end, yet can spend hours on things that place no demand on me. You see what I'm saying? If there's zero demands on me doing something, no one has asked me, reminded me, I'm not being relied upon, hasn't been pointed out I could do it. I can do it forever. No worries at all. See the difference? When there isn't 
those demands placed upon you in those particular ways, as an autistic person, you know, you could be hyperproductive and then rendered completely useless by this intervening act of some type of demand. It's ridiculous. It's a paradox. I get it. But again, I'm just pointing it out. I'm not here to justify it, make it good or bad. I'm just pointing it out. It's also the reason I can't do tasks or work that are time sensitive. But I have absolutely no trouble working on things that have just popped up into my head. Right? Long-term projects with no deadline. So again, this can be work, studying, uni, time-sensitive things. It can make it so hard. And you might say procrastination, but it's different with regards to demand avoidance in autism. So I want to give some brief advice. I'm going to do another podcast later on about how to actually avoid demand avoidance. That's a, that's a different podcast, a different conversation for a different day, but just a little bit of advice just to kind of give you a head start. And again, I, I can't justify this. I can't make this sound good or bad. If you, don't, if you think of this, I'm being stupid and this is just moronic, that's cool. I'm just trying to say there is a thing called demand avoidance for autistic people and it's real, it's legitimate. It, uh, to the point where I want to do this thing, I've planned to do this thing, I'm going to do this thing. Someone reminds me, or asks me or tells me to do it, and suddenly can't do it. Not a tantrum, not a manipulation, a legitimate thing, a feeling, a block. Okay, basic general advice. I would have thought the best advice I can offer autistic people who experience demand avoidance or parents, carers, and partners of autistic people is for starters, don't make it worse by judging it and minimizing it. Autistic people experience it. They can't just get on with it, okay? I can't just get on with it. There's a time constraint. Just get on with it. Go make your video. Come on, get it done. Let's get this video done. I can't just get on with it. I can't just get past it, okay? My brain has told me, no, there's no way you calculated it. There's no way this video can be shot, ready to rock in this period of time. So you're not going to do it. Well, just do one thing. No, I'm not going to do one thing. It doesn't work like that, right? There's a brain in overdrive beating yourself up or telling the autistic person in your life, just grow up, move on, man up, get it done. That'll only make it worse, right? And and guess what? Those things I just said, grow up, move on, man up, get it done. Their demands. You've just added more layers of demands to someone who's overwhelmed and blocked by demands. That doesn't seem right. Look at it like this. Telling an autistic person experiencing demand avoidance to just get on with it is, in general terms, like asking a person who uses a wheelchair to just walk up the stairs, mate. What's the problem? Where's the block? What's happening here? Get up the stairs. Right? See, this is not something you'd even consider. And and I don't think you should. (laughs) But you you would with autistic people. We are talking about a characteristic of a medically diagnosed disability condition. And the idea that we can just, what, pick and choose when it impacts us? Pick and choose when our condition disability impacts us. Oh, look, we'll let it impact us here, but we won't let it impact us via the demand avoidance stuff. What, we're going to turn off the manifestation of the disability? That's just... That's just bloody stupid. I mean, it's, it's fanciful. It's unhelpful. It's unacceptable. It's wrong. Do you get why it's wrong, by the way? Okay, so if demand avoidance is just one manifestation of a disability or a condition of autism, why do you think it's acceptable to just disregard it? Right? Does that, does this, does, I hope this makes sense. Demand avoidance is a manifestation of being autistic. Sure, there's other forms, but I'm, what I'm saying is it's a manifestation of a differently wired brain. So if it occurs as a manifestation of a disability or condition, what the hell are you doing judging it? I reckon demand avoidance can ruin jobs, study, friendships, relationships. And it's not because it's demand avoidance problem. It's because of this kind of double empathy problem, this lack of understanding between the two parties. So let's just look at it like this from now on, okay? 
You're not lazy. Sure, you can you can be lazy. I'm not saying by the way I don't just don't put off things just through procrastination or laziness or tiredness or burnout. There's other reasons, right? But from a demand of one's point of view, let's just look at it like this: your partner, your friend, your child, what your employee, your student, whatever, they're autistic. And at some point, a manifestation of that condition, that disability, will be demand avoidance, where something would trigger them to be unable to do or carry out a task they were going to do or they were planning to do or were in the middle of doing or could have done or are capable of doing. But the manifestation of that disability or condition has now rendered them unable to do it. And that's no different to any other manifestation of their medically diagnosed disability. So rather than allowing it to ruin relationships and experiences and opportunities and employment and all these types of things, can we just put it back into what it is? And it's just one of the many manifestations of someone who has a condition or a disability. Does that make any sense? God, I hope it does. My Friend Autism with Orion Kelly. Join the conversation now by following Orion Kelly on Facebook. Well, once again... You're awesome. I just want to thank you for your support. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Thank you if you had the chance to watch this video podcast. Please, I'd be delighted if you'd help me reach more people by sharing this podcast with the people in your life. We're here to raise a level of understanding, acceptance, and appreciation of the autistic community. You can do that also by subscribing to my YouTube channels, Orion Kelly, that autistic guy, and this one, Orion Kelly Podcasts. Hey, you know what? Your support means so much to me, so thank you, and you are amazing. Until my next podcast, thank you so much for watching or listening. <laughs> we'll talk soon. You've been listening to My Friend Autism with Orion Kelly. To join the conversation, get in touch with Orion, and binge all the podcasts, blogs, and videos, visit orionkelly.com.au.